Hello there, my friends. Chris Mark is here with you for Arcade Economics and excited to have a really exciting guest on. I've been listening to for a while, has some great coverage of the markets, the politics, everything that's going on, who is Michael Noonan of Edge Trader Plus. He's kind enough to join me today and talk about the markets and what he's seeing. So, Michael, how are you today, my friend? Morning, good morning. Good to talk to you, Chris. Yeah, and especially right now, fascinating times in the world where we're seeing a lot of the bubbles in the markets look as if they're on the verge of teetering. The Fed did it raise interest rates yesterday, although signaled that they may slow down next year. So curious your take on all these things that are happening and what you see going on right now. Well, I think you're you're you just you aptly uh, correctly described it as bubbles everywhere. Uh, it's hard to get a handle on anything because most of the markets are now, I think, so artificially manipulated. Uh, you know, the, the exogenous influences are not directly re related to um, the reality of supply and demand. It's more politically, everything is politically uh, driven and motivated. Uh, even even the Fed raising rates, uh, not quite sure what their motivation is, uh, because I know the, the most of the central banks from outside this country have been asking the Fed not to raise rates, but I think the Fed has to raise them in order to lower them as things fall apart uh, later on. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating dynamic that's happening. And I guess the follow-up question there, on one hand, yeah, the Fed has to raise rates at some point. We've had a decade of 0% interest rate and quantitative easing. And it seems as if they're in a corner where either they eventually raise rates and you continue seeing the pressure on the market or they revert back to printing. So how do they get out of that dynamic? Good question. Uh, some of them are talking about uh, trying to revert to the cryptocurrencies to escape having to deal with the uh, uh, cash situation. Uh, I don't know where they're going to go with that. I know the, uh, the IMF has been... Uh, talking more cryptocurrencies of late, uh, trying to, I, uh, whether they're trying to legitimize them to some degree, I don't know. I don't think Bitcoin will be their, their choice. They may develop their own because they cannot escape uh, control of the money supply, uh, irrespective of what that money is, is going to be, you know, what, what, the money, what will the money be? Cryptocurrencies, fiat cash, I have no idea. It sure is going to be interesting to see how it unfolds um, because at some point it seems, especially with the way the debt loads keep building, I know you've talked a lot before about how the biggest thing for people to look at is the debt. Do you see some form of a reset coming, whether it's an implicit reset with just more printing or an explicit actual default, or is there another way this all ends? It's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Uh, a reset, hard to know what a reset will entail. Uh, I think they're, they, they entrap themselves uh, uh, in, in, in ways that they never imagined would, were possible. And I think that the, the election of Trump has thrown a, a, a wrench in the works, as it were, because now they've lost uh, control of what they had been so, you know, not so smoothly, but uh, trying to uh, accomplish all their objectives for enslaving the people, as it were, uh, with money and printing uh, money at uh, uh, whatever rates they, they could. Not printing anymore. It's all digitalized. Uh, I don't know what a reset would entail, what a reset will look like, uh, and who's in Who's going, to, who's going to control it? You've got Russia added into the mix now. Their their economy is too small to take over anything. China is is now the uh, uh, the, the grill in the room, as it were. Uh, right. But they're not uh, they're not uh, financially able, I don't think, to handle uh, with with the yuan being a world reserve currency. Plus, both China and Russia, uh, United States is in a decline with with their with their financial. Uh, uh, inability to control the, the dollar anymore. I think that's it's fall, slowly falling by the wayside, chipping away constantly. Uh, China doesn't have the capacity to uh, to have a yuan, but China and Russia both are, are still behind the IMF and they're behind uh, the BIS. So, you know, what will a uh, what will a reset look like? Who will control it? You know, it, I don't know if anyone can answer that question. 
Yeah, certainly. <laughs> if I figure that one out, I will definitely be sure to tell you. <laughs> Although <laughs> it's it, one thing that a lot of people have been talking about, I've been wondering about, we hear that China and Russia buying gold co consistently. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows exactly how much they have. Do you think that that could be part of what they're aiming for going forward, some sort of gold backing? No. Uh, I think they're doing it just because gold has historically been such a, uh, uh, a strength for anyone's backing anyone's economy. But they're not going to use it for, uh, for, uh, for a, a backing of any currency, of, uh, you know, because it's, Gold is too restrictive. This is why this country went off the gold standard. <clears throat> it, uh, it inhibited their ability to print uh, money at will. And neither Russia nor you know, I think China is already all digitalized in their uh, digitalized in their currency. Uh, and there's no reason why they would want to hamstring themselves, nor would Russia, by tying uh, their any kind of uh, currency that they have to gold. Because it would, again, it just would prohibit them from expanding their their monetary base as needed. Right. I think that's a, a a misconception that a lot of people are holding. A reset and and gold is going to be going to be coming a, a going to become a backing of some kind of future currency. Not even the SDR, uh, uh, the special drawing rights, which I think is probably uh, more. And I don't know if it's going to go in, in, in the cryptocurrency direction, uh, but the SDR is probably going to play some kind of role uh, yet to be determined. But gold, gold will not be the backing uh, tied to the backing of any currency that's going to ha have any control in the uh, world uh, global economy, I don't think. Okay. And in terms of the SDR, I think some people hear about it a little bit. I've been familiar with the SDR for a while, have varying views over time of how likely that is to be implemented, but could you give a rundown for people who might be hearing about that for the first time and explain what that means? Yeah, I was hoping you could find someone who could explain it to me. <laughs> uh, the SDR is a uh, basket of currencies, uh, and uh, it has been, uh, what have you got? You got the United States uh, is, the, is the dominant uh, uh, participant in the SDR uh, comprises the dominant uh, uh, posture in the SDR. And you've got uh, uh, China. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Japan. Uh, I don't know. I don't, can't recall who the other currency holders were. Uh, 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 whether it was the Deutsche Mark, you've got a, a few other. They represent a basket of current of the uh, worldwide uh, currencies, and they recently, by pressure from China, added the yuan to the uh, the uh, the basket of currencies and the special drawing rights are going to probably be used from country to country and the uh, people like you and me or, or anyone on the street will not have access to it and they will use it and they, they may tie a little bit of gold to uh, to the SDR and say you know we can transact gold uh, from country to country but the you know the public is not to be included yeah um... It, it's, again, going to be fascinating to see how all these things play out. I know you talk a lot about the New World Order and how a lot of these things are orchestrated and planned in advance. And curious, maybe shifting a little bit to the political front, with the battle of deep, the deep state and, and Trump that's going on in the White House, can you give an update on where that stands and, and what is real? It seems like so much of what he says doesn't fit you know, when he was talking about gold standard and auditing the Fed coming into office. What do you think is actually happening right now behind the scenes there? You know, I wish I knew. That's it's, it's a uh, enigmatic situation there. Trump is uh, everyone in the, uh, the deep state, mainstream media, uh, Democrats, uh, even some Republicans are doing everything they can to get rid of Trump. Uh, let me let me qualify myself by saying I'm not a uh, I'm not a voter. I withdrew from the uh, federal system decades ago because I don't want to be a party to it. So I never vote for anybody. Uh, if, if voting had, if voting mattered, they would outlaw it anyway. So it doesn't. It's all bread and circuses. <laughs> uh, so uh, Trump is uh, is is an enigma because he uh, he's he's anti deep state, anti elite, anti new world order, 
yet many of his uh, appointments in the cabinet had been, you know, the, the swamp people, as they were, the swamp creatures the, uh, that they he claimed he was going to drain. He's in he's in a battle for uh, supremacy. He's in a battle for uh, uh, trying to take these people apart. And in some ways, he's he's winning. You know, he's he's doing it. A lot of people, you know, think he's a, a buffoon and everything. Um, I have a little bit of respect for the man. I don't respect a lot of politicians, but I think he's been struggling with a huge uphill battle and making some inroads. So I don't know. The deep state is so entrenched. I'm in some ways I'm surprised that he's still alive. You know, they got rid of uh, uh, Lincoln and they got rid of Kennedy for lesser reasons, and they tried getting rid of Reagan. Uh, yet no attempt has been made to get rid of him. So it uh, it remains to be seen, Chris. I'm not sure uh, uh, what the outcome is going to be. He keeps chipping away, and he in in many ways he's getting his own way. He's 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 succeeding in a lot of ways. Uh, he, he's certainly a, re a refreshing politician over Obama. A lot of people who think he's uh, Obama is very polished uh, c as compared to Trump, who's not polished. But Obama was was the deep state enshrined. Uh, you know, he, he made many promises before being elected. He never kept one. And everything he did uh, once he was elected was at the service of the deep state and the uh, new world order. Yeah, you're, you're right. And it, it's fascinating to watch where, again, I voted for Obama the first time. That was a little bit before I was digging into politics and then. Certainly, as I learn more and listening to folks like yourself and finding out what's really going on, I don't find Obama was quite as advertised, whereas Trump seems like, for the most part, he usually says what he feels, which is refreshing. And along those lines, you also mentioned two other presidents who did similar actions, Kennedy and Lincoln, who also were involved, or maybe not involved, but touched on silver as money. I'm curious, uh, any thoughts on the, the, what we hear about JFK thing and the silver certificates and Lincoln? I've heard you mention with the greenback, um, both involved in silver. Well, I think Lincoln uh, wanted to, uh, the, the Civil War uh, was not over slavery, as, as many people think. Uh, the Civil War was financed uh, on, on the north by the, I think it was the English Rothschild branch, and the south, uh, they were supported financially by the uh, French Rothschild Bank, who were both competing with each other just to make as much money as they could. Lincoln made the determination that, you know what, we don't need to borrow money. We can just issue treasury notes, treasuries, uh, uh, money from our treasury and not charge any interest. Well, you know, talk about uh, a, a shock to the Rothschild system and, and all the money that they would lose from uh, loaning money because wars right. are really profitable for them to lend. Bang. They got rid of Lincoln and that, that solved that problem. Kennedy, uh, you know, the I think the silver certificate is overblown. Uh, he was also interested in uh, taking apart the CIA and getting rid of them. So it was, it was more than just the silver situation. I think uh, Kennedy... It was also a threat to the uh, to the establishment, well, the deep state, rather the established part of the establishment, and the, you know that was his undoing as well. Uh, Reagan wanted to uh, uh, shrink the government, uh, another shock to the system of expanding the government and expanding uh, the debt, etc. And that's why I think there was an assassination attempt on him. When that failed uh, and Reagan recovered and got out of the hospital. Uh, he did. He went on a a, a full a head stream of expanding government. So that tells you where the ruling you know, where the rulers come from. All behind the scenes. Yeah, I, th I think you really phrased it well before when you were mentioning draining the swamp. Yet how much control they really have. Certainly, we saw the Goldman Sachs become half of the cabinet, which was a little disconcerting to hear. Exactly. Uh, but in terms of how people can approach, I think people are starting to wake up and see a lot of these things are going on are different than what we've been told. And then, you know, the next step is, all right, now that I get this and see it, how do I actually take it and use it productively? At least from a financial market standpoint, is this a time where you think the bubbles are close to popping and people might want to have short exposure? Do you recommend getting into gold and silver or what? From a trading standpoint, would people be worth, well served to think about? 
Well, I've been recommending gold and silver uh, uh, for s- several years now. Uh, not <clears throat> not so much in the futures. I refuse to. Yeah, and I used to uh, less so, but I used to uh, provide a weekly uh, on my blog a weekly commentary. And two of the markets, uh, three, gold and silver being t- uh, one market, two markets, but of one uh, precious metals. I refuse to. Uh, uh, Promote selling from the short side because I didn't want to add to the uh, what the uh, central bankers were doing in manipulating the price. And my mainstay uh, several years ago used to be the stock market, and I refused to trade from the long side. <laughs> you know, right. Talk about someone cutting their own throat. Uh, two of the uh, three of the largest markets, and I'm cutting them out because I did not want to. Uh, when the Fed uh, Federal Reserve was going to quantitative easing and everything, and they were going through these, they were purchasing uh, uh, stocks to keep them. I didn't want to support that either. So um, I sort of cut myself out of the uh, the biggest markets. I've just waiting been waiting for them to return. Now I think one can start selling the uh, the stock market, being on the short side of that. Uh, it's not going to be easy because I think the uh, the train is starting to leave on that one. It's, it's, it's one has to be very careful to uh, get in on the short side without being stopped out by some of these uh, huge moves. As for gold, gold and silver, uh, I'm not sure on that anymore. You know, I, I think they've they've lost their they temporarily lost their reason for uh, you know the logical reasoning for holding gold and silver. And it may take some time for them to uh, regain their legitimacy. They've been suppressed for so long, and and you know the bankers have done everything they can to uh, dis, uh, disencumber the people from wanting to even buy or own gold and silver. So uh, the reasoning for wanting to hold them is uh, there's not going to be a big panic. I don't think to uh, that's going to cause gold to jump to ten thousand as many people say or silver to four hundred dollars. They may rise up in price eventually, but they've got to stop going down first, and they haven't done that yet. Yeah, I think you nailed it where you mentioned not only has the price been lower, but the sentiment has been terrible. You also touched on how the precious metals markets are, have been manipulated and suppressed, and I agree with what you're saying, just like every market has been. Exactly. What I've wondered is that if we have all this paper outstanding – Again, seemingly a much smaller pile of metal that actually exists. I know you've mentioned before you don't see something happening happening imminent, yet is the ultimate resolution. I keep wondering if eventually whenever there is more demand or if that's a stock market panic or whatever, that someone shows up for a piece of metal and it's not there to be delivered. Do you see that eventually playing out? No, no, they'll, they'll they'll just deliver cash. The uh, the the exchanges have already set themselves up up for that. The the bigger problem, uh, Chris, that I see is uh, people who have gold and silver. What are they going to do with it? You know, if you if you if you have it and the value goes up, uh, how are you going to exchange it with anyone? Most people, uh, few people in this country are holders of gold and silver. A lot of people have never even touched or or, or seen actual uh, gold itself. So, you know, how are you going to use it? Are you going to trade? And with whom are you going to trade? I think the government is uh, keeps uh, uh, severely limiting the uh, the freedom and ability to be independent in this country. And they're going to clamp down just like you're trying to clamp down on on gun owners. They're going to clamp down on people who wants to uh, who want to go outside the system and and utilize uh, non fiat uh, money such as so. They're going to make it. It's it's like you know people who want to buy uh, uh, even at uh, uh, what are these swap meets that they have? Not swap meets. Uh, flea market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they even want to keep track of uh, purchases on the on the flea market. <clears throat> so uh, they're, they're going to keep track of whoever has gold and silver, uh, and they're going to make it almost impossible for them to uh, to transact, make any kind of transaction because it's going to have to be reported. And if you report that you have some gold and silver, well, where did you get it? Uh, how much did you pay for it? And thank you. We'll take it from you. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I have to agree with you there. Although perhaps, I don't know, when people ask what can we actually do, I think the more that people just hear this information and the things that you speak about, 
and realize because on some level if all the people stand up and realize wait there's a lot of us and a few of these guys that maybe have power but really comes down to understanding what's going on which is why i appreciate all these things you share perhaps two last quick ones before we wrap up but just have heard you comment on these before and would love to uh, run them by you you mentioned that building six was also destroyed in September 11th. I was actually there working downtown that day, so I was running from the dust cloud. Yeah. Found out years later that Building 7 just fell over, and now there's a Building 6 as well? Yeah, I was surprised, and I didn't find that out until uh, the last several months uh, when I when I posted it on uh, in one of the articles on my website. Seven uh, Building 7, I, I put up uh, that famous video where you, you just see it collapsing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with nothing, uh, nothing initiating any any uh, any type of collapse. And then I found out that Building Six was also destroyed. Uh, building Six is uh, uh, unassociated with any of the three other buildings, yet it, it was destroyed totally, just like the other ones. Now, whether it was, uh, uh, if you had, if you flew two airplanes into uh, the two respective buildings, that was insufficient for the buildings to collapse to the degree that they did. Not only did they collapse, they collapsed in a pulverized condition. You don't take concrete, uh, uh, steel uh, girders and everything and have them just pulverized into... Just into pulverized concrete. into dust. Yes. So, you know, whether it was Mossad that did the... Uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, putting up the uh, explosives for, for the uh, collapsing of uh, the buildings or what, but they didn't collapse because of the planes. And also unrelated, but uh, related in, a, in, a, in an obscure way. Do you remember the uh, explosion in uh, Oklahoma City? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was Timothy McVeigh. Yep. Uh, they he they allegedly uh, not he parked his his van filled with uh, fertilizer explosives and exploded it. What he had in that van could never have done the damage that the building uh, uh, sustained. Right, uh, right. Uh, and and there you had similar situations where the part of the building was pulverized itself. You had one of the uh, uh, I don't know if he was a janitor or a night a night watchman or something. A guy named Brown, I think, as I as I recall, uh, who saw people mysteriously uh, uh, entering the building uh, late at night uh, on a on a uh, routine basis, and he 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 died. Uh, died mysteriously died within a year after this thing so all these things are going on to uh, keep 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 people from finding the truth and uh, I think the uh, the World Trade Center uh, going down was a uh, very uh, cheap uh, way of uh, clamping down I what what, uh, what did Obama pass the uh, Patriot Act Patriot Act okay it's a way uh, so so they lost 3,000 lives it's, it's a cheap way of uh, for the new world order I'm talking from their perspective a cheap way to uh, clamp down more on the uh, on the United States uh, and, and keep uh, everybody under the thumb to lose 3,000 lives and versus how many lives are left are lost when, during these wars in Europe etc and all over the world so uh, and, and tying this back down to building six uh, so I was surprised and shocked that Building 6 was similar to Building 7, and the whole thing is just a charade, a cover-up for uh, what's been going on. All the gold that was under uh, 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 disappeared, all the uh, the bonds. I think there was there were, uh, uh, with respect to uh, uh, Kansas City, the Clintons were tied into that because there was a lot of information on the Clintons stored in Kansas City. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, uh, especially when you dig into the financials of that and, and everything that happened that day. And and can you also verify, I've heard a lot of folks mention that the section of the Pentagon that blew up contained, I believe it was the Department of Naval Affairs, basically the group that would have been responsible to audit the $2.3 that Donald Rumsfeld announced was missing and he didn't have any idea where it went on September 10th of 2001. Well, there's an expression, there are no accidents. That's what I thought too. Last one for you before we wrap up here. I've never heard many people in uh, financial media mention this, but have come across it myself. You talked about the, the capital letters on government documents. I was wondering if you could explain that for folks. Sure. The, uh, uh, the United States, uh, 
has been federalized, uh, the, the original constitution no longer exists. It's been supplanted by a federal constitution. Think of it as the, uh, you know, we live on the land itself, but the federal constitution and the federal government of the United States is like a plastic overlay. So you can't see, you're no longer touching the, uh, the, the ground as it were. And the federal government is a corporation. Corporations cannot deal with uh, uh, with people; they can only deal with other corporations. So what they what they did, uh, they created. I don't know if it ties into the Fourteenth Amendment when they created a a, a new un, uh, a new status of citizen, which never existed prior in, uh, prior to the Fourteenth Amendment. And these were citizens of the federal government, uh, and they're all capitalized letters because they they made people corporations. As, a, as it were. You look at your driver's license, you look at uh, anything from the government, and your name is spelled in all capital letters. That is not recognized in the English language for proper names. It's, uh, you know, large capital, small letters for the names. Uh, the only, uh, the only all caps apply to corporations. So the only way the federal government can deal with other people uh, like you and I is to incorporate them and make them uh, corporations. So when you go into a courtroom, for example, and they call out uh, uh, they call it your name. They're calling out your corporate name. Well, you mm -hmm. don't know that. So you say, yeah, I'm here, here, you know. Mm -hmm. And so you you have agreed by saying, yes, it's me. You agree that you are the uh, corporate entity that in which they're dealing. I've been in court where I, I said to the judge, I am not the person that you're calling. I'm not even a person. I'm an individual. My name is spelled differently. And she said, I don't recognize you. I can't deal with you. I don't recognize you. And I won't deal with you because I refuse to be the corporate entity that they that they can only deal with. So I don't know if that answers your question as to why the all cap letters. It's because it's the corporate version of the individual. So when you try that, they actually back down and respected. Yes. The, yes. Wow. I've been one because I've, I've heard about it, have wondered how it would actually play out. So. Michael, that is fantastic to hear, as is just about everything else you shared in the last 25 minutes. Again, when people wonder what can we do, I think it really starts with the internal and learning, educating ourselves. So Absolutely. I'm darn grateful for you and all that you do and all the talks that you give. Perhaps just in wrapping up, you can let folks know where they can find you and get some more information. I'm at, uh, I have a blog, uh, edgetraderplus.com, and uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't do weekly uh, commentaries anymore. I'm, I'm more, you know, as the mood hits, uh, until there's more uh, more fluidity in, in the markets that I follow, uh, and as I you know as I see other trades, I'll present them for people to consider, and I've even uh, cut down on those so that I, I can get into what I call now the the uh, the, the cream of the creme uh, uh, trades, the top one percent of the one percent. So I'm trading less and less because I'm only looking for specialized uh, trading situations, and that includes gold and silver. Uh, I've just not uh, had reason to to go for the long side because the uh, the market is still in a uh, a downtrend and you, you know I've lost more I lost more money in this past year trying to buy gold and silver on breaks uh, which failed uh, and you just can't be a buyer on, on downtrends so I'm waiting for the market to be confirmed to turn around on both gold and silver and start recommending even in, on the future side in addition to the uh, in addition to acquiring physical gold and silver. Even even though I don't I don't know what the future is going to be for acquiring the physical asset, I still think it's essential to have just in case. I couldn't agree more, Michael. And it, I'll, it'll be darn fascinating to follow along with you as these things unfold. You have a great perspective on the markets and the politics, which people are really going to benefit from. So again, I appreciate you being here and making some time. Been a pleasure to finally catch up and meet you, and we'll hope to do it again soon.